I carry the book for you, please come up and share. I, just one more thing, and that is that this whole experience brings me to tears. When I drove over to meet you that day, I was crying on the way. I had such a, a beautiful sense of what this could evolve into, and, and this is our prayer. Thank you. Amen. Stuff together, that's a definite. That was beautiful. Wow. Thank you, and thank you guys. It really was great to listen to you, and I didn't even know you existed until today. So, uh, the last couple of days. So, this is uh, maybe a message to us. We're neighbors, and yet we don't even know each other. So, let's let's uh, let's make sure we that's the last of that, and we get to do more things together. So, um, this summer we spent the uh, my wife and I spent our part of our sabbatical. We lived in Tel Aviv. Uh, for the first time. We have two uh, of our children who are now serving in the IDF, and so we thought it might be nice um, for them to have their, their Abba and Ima around, and, and so we did. But um, I don't want to contradict Jeremy, but our son is, is called a Chayel Boded in Israel, meaning a lone soldier. But I want you to know that our children are never alone. Uh, they have been embraced by their kibbutz parents who treat them as their own. Kibbutz mother does their laundry every Friday when they come home, big stinking army laundry. But when they go back to the base, it's all clean, folded back. When they're on a train and they say they're a Kayobo dead, somebody says, no, you're not even coming to our house for dinner. There's no such thing as being alone in Israel. I mean, really, they're not. They're well taken care of. And, uh,